go quick though because there's not that much that really has to be done back here uh, other than just plugging in the equipment you know I'm not dealing with electricity and 12 volts and all that kind of crap I do have to get these computers charged up though So what I want to do is, uh, I know I took it down, here we go, I am almost positive I have enough here, so this has to get undone, because I got to connect this, which I don't like doing, uh, to the, uh, let me see here, No, I don't want a big one. Uh, let's take this one. Yeah, that would be alright, I guess. Okay. Now, wait a minute. I need two of them. Oh, boy. Yeah. There's already one on the other end of the wire out there. Now, the wire that's out there is this. Uh, and it's actually the antenna so when I connect this to it I'm just lengthening the antenna uh, which uh, in a way how do I get that out of there how do I, gee, how do I get that all wrapped up in there you know this wire always finds a way a hose always finds a way of getting tangled up alright so let's do this now, the only thing is that I'm not crazy about this is, uh, but it works. It's aluminum. And copper always seems to work best. Well, I got to call my daughter. She called me last night. I didn't hear the phone. But by the time I realized it, it was like late. She didn't leave a message. You would think it would come right off for me. No, no. This is one of those projects that was an easy project, but it was so easy that it said, you know what, we're going to make it difficult on them. <laughs> I don't score the wire at all with the knife because it'll get a weak spot and uh, we don't need a weak spot there we go now let's put this in here uh, it's actually a little too long so how much do I need because I want to make sure I get the casing with it to help support it so I'm going to take it right about here, I guess. This way that casing will hopefully fit in there. Well, it should, but it... Where's the other end? I want to see something there. I use the copper on the other ones. Doesn't make a difference, but I'm thinking, yeah, see, the copper is a little bit bigger than this one. So, uh, well, this will work. Let me get my, uh, there we go. So, anyway, today's Sunday. I think it's the 8th.
I just want to get this down enough so that I can get it inside that clip or that uh, eye hook there, or eye lid, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's really close. I bet you if I put some oil on there, I can get it. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Now i got to take a little bit more off. Well, at least I know I'm going to be able to crimp it. I'll actually probably throw some solder on there, too. But Yeah, okay. We're getting there now. Now we're getting there. This wire is damn stiff. It's a grounding wire. That's the problem. Which makes it... Uh, real stiff to work with I guess they use it for fencing and things on farms I don't know I haven't worked on a farm in geez, 60 65 years and they didn't have all this electric fencing back then The manager at Tractor Supply, nice guy, he's from Canada. I think I told you that he was uh, really into where they were uh, saying they had stage four. <clears throat> and uh, I kind of felt sorry for the guy. So I says, well, you know, you got family at home? And he goes, no, he has nobody at home. So well, you got family here? He goes, nope. So he's like the last of the Mohegan. And he goes here alone. Uh, nice guy, again from Canada. And uh, here he is. Um, with uh, possibly stage four cancer. But he went to work every day. He's still working. Uh, he actually became the manager of the place. And he, act he actually, he looks pretty good. So I'm wondering uh, if it was, I haven't had a chance to talk to him. But I'm wondering if maybe they misdiagnosed it. Which in a way I hope for his sake. But anyway, he's now the manager at the tractor supply. And the last time I was up there, he was talking about how he lost uh, three people. Uh, one of them found a better job. One of them was offered uh, something, uh, a farm or something. And another one was moving out of the state for some reason or another. And he's looking at me. And I said, there's a problem. I says, I don't want to work. <laughs> I said, I don't, I'd like to help you out, but <laughs> if it involves me coming in and punching the clock, it's not going to happen. Now that, uh, <laughs> that's how I ended up at West Marine. Had a boat, went in there one day. This guy Mark was working there. And uh, I'm at the register paying. And he says to me, you know, you ought to work here. What do you mean ought to work here? He goes, yeah. He says, they're looking for help. I go, well, tell me about it. Next thing you know, he's on the phone calling Lee, who was the manager, who was in the back office. 
and it was almost like, Lee, I got a guppy here. <laughs> so anyway, she comes out uh, at a real fast pace of uh, walking. And I said, so what's the story? She was a discounts are phenomenal. I go, but what's the story? You can't beat the discounts. I said, what's the story? She said, well, it doesn't pay much. I said, well, I'm really not concerned about that. So, uh, she said, back then now, you got to remember. She says, they start you at $7.50 an hour. Yeah, but the discounts, oh, these damn discounts, you know. Okay, well, if you have a boat, I don't know how it is now, but if you had a boat, you'd want to work at West Marine, part-time, one day a week, and you know what, half the time they want those part-timers, they don't want full-time. And uh, I says, well, here's the story. Because I, I really, I wasn't working. I had to stop working. So, you know, it's time to take a break. However, I was suckered into driving a school bus for a while. <sighs> so I said, well, listen. I says, I'll do 10 to 2. And I'll do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thinking that, you know, she's done a thing, well, who's this guy making demands? She goes, okay. <laughs> and that's how I ended up doing the job. Next thing you know, I'm the electronics manager. However, I never had to work weekends. They, they held up to their agreement. Uh, I did start working a couple of extra days. Uh, and sometimes a couple extra hours. You know how it is. You, get, you start getting involved. And uh, you just, next thing you know, you all right, what am I doing? And then I wasn't driving the school bus anymore. I decided to get rid of that because I was only helping out at the time. They uh, sold out the company. The owners still work there, though. That was part of their sellout. And they still ran it. They were basically taking care of it what was like it was theirs. But they no longer owned it. They were more or less just management. There. Uh, so anyway, uh, I was working at the at the bus company. I'd go in about 6:30, and in the winter time that's not easy because you got to fight with cold buses, and it takes forever to warm them things up. And then you're out there picking up kids in the dark. Because in the winter time, you know, the, everything changes. And I'd get done about 9.15. And that gave me enough time to grab a coffee and something to munch on. And then uh, go to West Marine. Get out of two. Drive back to the bus company. Jump on a bus. So here I am working... Two jobs again. And then I finally said, listen, yeah, to the bus company, yeah, yeah, this is only part-time to help you out, you know, I mean, I like it in law, but, you know, the kids didn't bother me, but it was still, pain in the ass. 
actually the kids get to know you and sometimes they treat you better than they treat their parents. I threw uh, a Cosgrove off the bus and uh, come on. Okay, that's not going to work that way, so we're just going to cut your ass off. I was trying something different. But it didn't work. So anyway, uh, it was her. Now, there were only like 10. Uh, as a rule, she was a real quiet person, however. But uh, her and this other world, girl started picking on one of these kids that uh, was just one of the quiet guys, you know, with quiet kids. You know, he kind of just got on the bus, you know, watched what he was doing, he listened. He would talk a little bit, you know, to the other kids, you know, but he was more or less, you know, himself. He, he's reading his homework book. You know, he was, he was a good kid. Uh, he wasn't a socialite, but meanwhile, um, they started picking on him. And they had it to the point to where he started to cry. Now this was on the way to school. So I says to her, I said, I'm telling you now, you're going to apologize and you're going to stop it or you're going to walk home. Well, apparently they didn't think I was serious. And I was serious. Now, they wouldn't have walked home. They would have had their parents come and get them. 